Greetings and welcome to Journey of Enlightenment. I am your host, Dr. Roger Gopal. Have you ever walked into a card store, such as Hallmark, and picked up any birthday card saying, I wish you the worst birthday ever? Most likely not. What about a Christmas card? Or how about a Happy Diwali card, but rather it being an unhappy Diwali? Most likely you would not find such cards because it is our nature to wish well. It is our nature to say, have a bright and prosperous new year. We all desire happiness. We all desire bliss. We all desire peace. Because it is the core of our being that desires this. So naturally, as a humankind, we will gravitate towards our core. What it is that we truly want in life. Peace, not difficulty. In fact, so much so, Winston Churchill said that a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. In other words, it is about our attitude, how we choose to see things. We can either look at the promises of opportunity or we can look at the prominence of difficulties. I knew a young man while growing up. He would often say, whenever difficulties come his way, why me? Why not someone else? Why do I have to go through this? Why I have to face these difficulties in my life? I wonder if God is just working against me. I wonder if the universal forces are just working against me. I wonder if anyone else is going through what I'm going through. And I know this young man well because that was me. It's only while growing further, I recognize that I am not the only one in life who is going through these difficulties. Almost everyone that I've met had some problem or the other. Why? Because I guess that is the nature of life. It might be in terms of illness. It might be in terms of some sort of relationships. Because I've seen people who are very healthy, but their relationships are not very healthy ones. Some who are lucky to have good physical health, healthy relationships, may not necessarily have good financial health. And difficulties can hit us in any of those areas in life, whether it be our body, relationships, family, workers, romantic, or in terms of our finances. It is something that we can't seem to escape. But how we deal with it will determine how successful we live our lives in the end. In today's program, I am going to look at that particular topic, dealing with difficulties. Many a times, when difficulties come our way, we have certain options available to us. We can either give up or we continue and complain until the end or we try and find solutions in face of those difficulties that we encounter. In other words, we may not be able to change the, the external factors, but we can change our perspective and how we choose to deal with those difficulties. There's a case that I know of a young woman who was in her late 20s and she got married. It was the happiest day of her life, according to her. She had a good job. She had finished her degree as well, and things were going well. And then she was diagnosed with an immune deficiency. Unfortunately, 
for this uh, young girl, she became paralyzed from the waist down. Total immobility. She could not walk. She could not uh, reach to work anymore. She was uh, unable to even make it to the bathroom or change her own clothes. In the first year of marriage, her husband dropped her back at her parents' house and never turned back. This girl, she had all reason to give up. And this was uh, a difficult period in her life that I consider unimaginable for anyone to go through. But she was going through it. And her parents were going through it. And one day I spoke to her mother and her mother said, you know, we cannot change the situation, but what we can do is learn how to adapt and learn how to deal with these difficulties as it arises. Sometimes we may even deny the existence of such difficulties. We may live a life where we try to pretend these things aren't happening to us. I know of a real situation where a man lost his wife. For one year later, he was still preparing breakfast every morning, putting her breakfast in the same place that she ate every day for one year after her demise. He was just not ready to accept it. He was not ready to accept the reality that he was facing. Dealing with difficulties uh, in the sense of denying the existence or the reality of those difficulties, learning to deal with the reality of the situation may not be easy, but it is necessary. It was not easy for this man to come to terms with the fact that he lost what he called his soulmate, his life's partner. But continuing a life of denial was mentally unhealthy for him. We cannot go about life pretending that everything is okay, that everything is always fine, especially when it's not. While we may not wish to admit it to the world, admitting it to ourselves is the first step in dealing with life difficulties. Another way many people tend to face the difficulties in life is by complaining and believing that by complaining they are actually doing something about it or at least feeling good about it. Another way that some people deal with difficulty is by complaining. They believe that by complaining, they are actually doing something about it. Or they might be feeling good that they complain. So they complain to themselves, they complain to their parents, they complain to their spouses, they complain to their friends, they complain to their neighbors, they might complain to their colleagues at work and not realize that they are developing a habit of complaining about everything that is going on in their lives. Les Brown once said, he said when you go about life complaining to everyone, at least 50% of the people that you complain to don't care. And the other 50% glad it is actually you rather than them. Now that was a joke. We know that the statistics are not true. However, what is true is that complaining all the time about the difficulties that one is going through definitely brings no solution. But not only do we complain to others, sometimes we complain to ourselves. How is that? By our own thinking. The negative dialogue that we have with ourselves whenever difficulties arise. 
or why me? I would never get through this situation well. I am doomed to failure. Why is it that only me, just me, who goes through situations like this? Why is life so unfair? Why is everyone around me so unfair? And we go about moaning and groaning about the situation. Les Brown told a story of a guy walking on the road, a passerby, and he saw a dog lying down on a step, a wooden step. And the dog was moaning and groaning. So the passerby, out of curiosity, called out to the owner of the dog and asked the owner, why is it that your dog is moaning and groaning? So the owner said, oh, he is moaning and groaning because he's lying down on a nail. So the passerby became even more curious. If he's lying down on a nail, why doesn't he just get up and stop moaning and groaning? So the owner looked at the passerby and said, I guess the nail isn't hurting him bad enough. Sometimes we live life like that. We moan and we groan. We complain and we complain and believe that that will bring a solution. It never would. Maybe it's not hurting us bad enough to get up and do something about it. So the question that we now ask ourselves, is there any easy answer to dealing with life's difficulties? And in all honesty, no. There are no easy answers. But it takes a trained mind to be able to handle life's difficulties. And a trained mind meaning not the brightest mind, not the sharpest mind, not necessarily so, but the calmest mind. The first thing that we do in dealing with life's difficulties is to bring our mind to peace, to bring our mind to calm. Now, many of you may think that is contradictory by nature. If there's a storm around you, how could you bring your mind in a place of calm? in a place of equipoise. It is not really that possible. But the answer is yes, it is possible. How we bring our minds to calm? The first step is to acknowledge what it is that we do have control over, what we do not have control over. In the case of the young girl who had this crippling disease, one of the things that she said to herself at the beginning is that my disease is incurable. That is the truth. There is no cure. How would you deal with something like that? Well, the first thing was to accept the reality, which was a sad reality and could be quite discouraging as well. But this young girl looked at me and she said, I know that it is, but I will manage each day one step at a time. I cannot right now be in a position to know what will be in the next five years or even the next 10 years. But what I do know is that I have now and I am able to deal with now one step at a time. She also told me, she said, I cannot walk. And it was quite heartbreaking for me. And again, I asked her, how do you deal with such a difficulty? Knowing that you were so independent your entire life and now you're in this position. She's looked at me and she said, I cannot walk today. But what I do know is that I have the will the strength of mind that I will make sure that I do my utmost best until I can walk again. This girl 
worked from the time she was 18 years old until this disease overtook her body in her late 20s. She was financially independent. So I asked her, I said, how do you deal with this situation now? Not having a job, not being independent, not having your day occupied. And she looked at me and she said, what do you mean by having my day not occupied? I am still very productive. What she actually did was uh, join multiple online courses and she continued to educate herself, continued getting certificates, continued to build and uh, to develop her own intellect and her knowledge base. At no point in time was she unproductive. She now had to depend on people, something that she was never accustomed to. She once had her own car. She had her, her own apartment. Now she's in a situation where she needs someone to even take her for breakfast in the kitchen. And she said, yes, once upon a time, I needed no one. But today I am thankful for having so much people who's willing to support me, who's willing to be there for me. I asked her, I said, please sum up for me how you faced such difficulties. If you had to advise others, what would that advice be? And she told me, she said, the mind must be balanced. With a balanced mind, you can do anything in this world. But secondly, one must be attention to self-conversation. If your self-conversation is working against you, then you are your greatest enemy. There might be many reasons to complain, to moan and groan about the situation. Of course, it's easy to find the negativities. But while being surrounded by all these potential negative thoughts, let us find the light and focus on that light that takes us to the end of the tunnel. The third thing she said to me was that look at the factors around you. What do you have control over? Nothing much when you look at the greater scheme of things. But you do have control over your own emotions, your own feelings, your thought patterns. If you are able to control your thoughts, able to change the negative self-dialogue into a positive self-dialogue, then you are able to change your life. This young girl went on to explain to me that yes, I can worry and I can fret over the situation or I can live in hope. I can live with aspiration. I can live with the thought that I will conquer this and I will do better. I asked her, I said, do you feel alone? knowing what happened to you. She said to me, she said, look, if something cannot come to me, then I should go to it. If my friends cannot uh, meet me to, to hang out and to socialize outdoors, then they come home and we do the same. There's always an alternative. There is always hope. It is what we choose in our lives. Difficulties will come. It will come in one way or the next. It may not be here today. It may, may not be there tomorrow. But it might come at some point in time, though we wish that it wouldn't. But when those uh, times of uh, troubled waters 
do meet us, then how we approach it, the attitude that we take, our pattern of thinking will so determine how successful we are in navigating those troubled waters. It is my encouragement to you that yes, if life becomes difficult, it does not augur well for us to find all the reasons to complain, nor does it work when we try to blame everyone and everything. But let us uh, go within ourselves with a prayerful mind, with a calm mind, a mind in equipoise. Let us look at what is within our control and what is outside of our control. Let us live with hope and with the dream of a better tomorrow. And let us pursue that dream regardless of. I am Dr. Roger Gopur and thank you for joining me in this edition of Journey of Enlightenment. <laughs>